Good evening, afternoon. It's afternoon, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. This is your girl, Coco929. I know I have not been on here in a while. Just been trying to do other stuff, plus make sure I get my health back in order the way it's supposed to be. Just, you know, living life. I have been in the bushes, though, <clears throat> on YouTube. Um, something disturbing um, was posted this morning, and I wanted to tell... Uh, a story regarding how I dealt with that same situation and bless be unto God that my results came out differently. So I was dating this guy and um, we moved in together. Actually, it was my place, but nevertheless, we were dating. We were kicking it. Fine specimen. And I mean, I'm 5'2". This person was 6'3", 220, no fat, solid, caramel complexion, bow-legged, with a size 14 shoe. Ladies, you understand where I'm coming from, okay? And this person was so possessive over me um, that for a while, and some of you already know, um, because if you've been listening to my channel, then you know some of the stuff I went through. So I took him being possessive over me as a form of love. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward with that because it, it's going to be another story that I come back to tell y'all. Because that's, oh, that's, that's like an onion effect too. When you peel it back, more layers come. But today I wanted to just get on here and just enlighten my sisters and talk to the men as well. So this particular guy, we dated... Um, had, we had a child together, um, and I'm skipping around some stuff to get to my point. So, this particular person had a friend, older man, and when I first met the man, the very first day, he was polite, but it was like he really didn't have no use for me. I didn't really care because I didn't know him to care or not, you know. So as long as you don't disrespect me, we okay. So after that initial meeting, the second time, he was more warming up to me, you know, and stuff like that. And so how did I, let me see. So this went on for a minute, okay. So eventually, my particular boyfriend at the time, he moved in with me because I had just got my apartment. He moved in with me. Um, when I first moved out on my own, uh, when, put like this, when I went from, I was in foster care, and my foster mother says, as long as you check in with me, you know, you're okay. So I got emancipated a week after my, no, I got emancipated. Yes, a week after my 17th birthday. So I've been on my own really since 16 because my foster mother allowed me to stay with my boyfriend. And my boyfriend stayed with this man at the time. Okay, so now y'all all, all cut up, caught up. So I stay there maybe three nights out of the week, okay? And uh, this went on until I got my own apartment, which was a week after my emancipation. I got my own apartment. And when I moved in, I had dishes, I had my clothes, and I had blankets. Because I'm such a hustler, I knew it would only be a matter of time before I had what I wanted. And I'm one of them. I'm not going to just get something until I get what I want. No, if I'm going to put effort into getting something, I might as well stay focused on my goal and just go without until I get what I want. So, um... My boyfriend at the time, he said, uh, don't worry about it. He said, all I need you to do is tell me what you want. I show me, we'll have it. And I was like, okay. Because see, call me what you want, but you can't date me and not help me. It don't work like that. I'm sorry. So um, when I tell you this guy was a... An amazing pool player. 
oh my goodness, there were many a times when we were low on money for one reason or another, and he would get that pool stick, and I would hear, hey, yo, man, he's down there cleaning them out at the pool hall, man, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I already know. And, and not to be funny, but when he came in, he's like, here, babe, do what you need to do, you know. So what woman wouldn't love that? You know, anything I wanted, I had. And like he said, he ended up putting furniture in my house that I wanted. Um, I mean, honey who? Spoiled, okay? Anything I wanted, spoiled, but he was possessive, okay? Like, if his butt went outside, he hollered, hey, where you at? I'm on the porch, all right? Like that type of possessive. Or if I walked to the store, he was walking through the apartment complex looking for me. And they're like, hey, your man looking for you? I'm like, huh? And then he'll see me like, why didn't you tell me you was going somewhere? Man, I went to the store. He's like, yeah, but you got to tell me that, man. So, you know, it's a price to pay for everything. You feel me? Okay, so like I said, I'll get into all that later because, yeah, nothing in life is free. Remember that. So, um, we got into it one day, and from my understanding, okay, me and him got into it because when he got home, it looked like he had been in a fight, and I said, what happened to you? Because I keep telling you, I'm a warrior, okay? I'm one of them I, I used to be because I'm changed, thank you, Jesus, but I was a fighter, Okay? And I didn't care, you can be, I used to say from 8 to 80, you can get it, you know. Man, beast, don't matter. Don't matter. These hands don't discriminate. So, I was like, who did it? You know, ride up, let's roll, you know. He was like, nah, I'm good. I'm like, nah, this ain't right. You mean tell me you've been in a tussle or something? I said, look at you. He wasn't beat up, but he wasn't himself either. Like I said, it went down, like good gas went up, Okay. So he gets mad at me because I keep inquiring about these questions. So I'm like, then he finally tell me that him and old dude he used to stay with got into it. And I'm like, what? Y'all best friends. Why y'all fighting? You know, like it. Because he said something out of, you know, out of the way. He said something stupid. You know, and I had to check him on it, you know, and all this and stuff. So I'm using today's language, okay? Um, so I was like, it don't sound like him. Okay. Fast forward, I had a chance to talk to, we're going to call him OG. I had a chance to talk to OG. OG said, come in and sit down for a minute. I said, okay. Came in, sit down. He had cooked. I said, oh, I want some. Because OG could throw. You hear me? And OG, I knew he was kind of, you know, I, I just knew. I knew he was kind of, he was an OG, but it was something off about him. But he was, like I said, after that first day, he was nice to me. I didn't care. I don't judge people like that. You know what I'm saying? So, OG said, I know you heard about the fight. I said, yes, well, I'm over here because I need to know what happened. Y'all best friends. You know, he said, we who? I said, best friends. He said, is that what he told you? So, then I'm looking at I don't put my fork down. I'm looking at him. I said, y'all not best friends? And he just started laughing. Not laughing like, ha, ha, ha. But I'm like, huh, huh, huh. I ain't think he told you. I said, tell me what? He said, Coco, we wasn't best friends. He was my lover. I'm going to let them marinate. Now I'm going to sip on my coffee. <sighs> Whew. Thank you, Jesus. You heard me. My boyfriend. Mr. 6'3 himself, 220, solid, bow-legged, size 16 shoe, karma complexion, thug life, was on the down low. And the man he was on the down low with was the one that he moved me in there with when I was 16, saying that that was his friend, his best friend. And the reason why OG looked at me the first time he saw me like, who is this B? It's because mm -hmm. I was in troop. No, his territory. And here, my boyfriend telling me something different. Oh, he's just stupid. He don't really like 
females, you know, and all this and stuff, except the ones he's around and deal. You know, all this and stuff. I mean, he had his stuff together. Do you hear me? Together. So, I sat there and I looked at him when he was telling me this. He said, that's why I'm glad you came over here. And I said, she's coming over here. I'm going to make sure that me and her have some time to talk together before he shows up. Now, where he made his mistake was he allowed his girlfriend to talk to his two-wheeling boyfriend without him being there. Because me and him had a lot in common. I like to cook. I'm a bad cook. I cook from scratch. I'm, I cook like my great-grandmother them and all them and stuff. He's a cook. He was a chef. You know, so some stuff that I didn't know he taught me and some stuff he didn't know I gave him recipes. So, you know, we bounced out both of us clean, keep a nice house, you know, and all this and stuff. So, you could have bought me for a penny and had much change. Do you hear what I'm saying? You talking about pissed, baby? I was pissed to the highest pissedivity. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything, every emotion known to men went through me. Went through me. I played my position that day because when he came to pick me up and he walked through that door and me and OG looked at him, he knew something. I said, you need to take me home. I was so calm. I was so calm on the outside. But on the inside, baby, it was a quiet storm brewing. Because what you don't do is play with my life. Okay? And he said, what's wrong? You need to take me home. He said, okay. He said, come on, baby, let me take you home. Then he said, I thought we was going to eat over here and stuff and everything. And so, OG just looking at him with a smile on his face. See? Because as quiet as it's kept, most my my um, interaction with uh, most homosexual men is they're catty like women. That's my interaction with him. I ain't says everybody, and he was just as catty. He did his he did what he set out to do, which is inform me, and I thank him for that. Okay, because had it been left up to the boyfriend at the time, I would have never knew. So as we riding home, he's just talking. He's, baby, you okay? You want to stop and get you something to eat? You know, all this and stuff. I said, no, I'm fine. I just need to get home. That's it. I hate you ain't feeling good. He still ain't put two and two together. You left. Everything was fine. You walk in and your woman's face and whole attitude is done flipped. And you ain't picked up on something that happened. Okay. So, <clears throat> we get to the apartment. I walks in. He walks in after me. He's just talking. I done shut the door. I done locked the door. I'm still walking. Okay. I'm in my kitchen. I said, um, you want to tell me something? What you mean? What? What does it tell? I, don't, I knew something was wrong with you. What he say? Man, he always lying about stuff. What he say? I said, do you want to tell me something? What he say? Do you want to tell me? So at this time, I told you. The Indian blood in me, I got my daddy's blood, I'm sorry. It it rages. So at this time, I'm I done lost it. See he's gonna try to grab me up, like I told you, five two and a half. Now I'm a half, but the time I was five two. And I was what, one forty, one fifty. He gonna try to grab me up, tell me, stop acting all stupid. I do everything for you. Blah, blah, blah. You mean tell me you'll take some out? I said, you got one minute to take your hands off me. He said, what you talking about? I said, because you gay. 
You should have saw his face. When I tell you his eyes turned like slits and his face went from shock to be I kill you. So I know how that woman felt when she said what she said to them two men. Because that's exactly how it happens. He turned into somebody I had never seen in my life. And if I could have told y'all, I was looking in the eyes of the devil. But I'm just whore-headed because I don't skirt easy. And even if I did, I don't show it. I got brothers. So, he's like, be what you called me. He had never called me out of my name. That's how I knew it. He said, be what you called me. I said, gay. Okay. So, this time, he going to hit me. When he hit me, he forgot I was in my kitchen. And I rose up with two steak knives. And baby, he couldn't be, he was not a match and was not ready for them steak knives. You hear me? When it was all said and done, and I pushed his butt up out that house and apartment, and I slammed the door and locked it. Then I came back and took the clothes that I gathered real quick, set them on fire, and I'm walking through my apartment with this stuff smoking. I opened back up the door. I, you know, it was crazy. I opened back up the <laughs> Lord, thank you, God. And tossed it on him and his blood and told him, if you, you, I mean, I went off because I feel like this. And I feel like it's, if that's who you are, be who you are. Don't take my life and play with it. If you're going to be a man who likes men and like women, then when you approach a woman, you say, look, this is who I am. I've dated men and I've dated women. You know, I'm attracted to both. Do not take my life in your hands and play Russian roulette with it. And that was around the time also that HIV and AIDS and all that and stuff, you know, we didn't know a lot about it and everything. And, you know, but even if we did, still, it's my right to know. It's my right to know. And you have been with me and him. That's not fair. And you had the nerve to be possessive over me. And that's the thing, y'all. He didn't want to let me go. And he was too afraid that somebody in that circle, because it's a circle. Let me let me hit you women to that, too. They got a circle, okay? If you've never seen, what is that movie? I'm going to have to get the name of it. It's a movie, not colors. But um, in this movie, it's a black woman. She was married. And... I remember in this movie, this man came over and say, Hey, is this house for rent? Or do y'all know something to her husband? And he was like, No. And he said, Oh, I think you got something in your eye. That's the that's the thing to let let the man know I'm I'm down low, are you? Um, or either they give each other five and and um the man who's interested, like, rub a finger in the middle of the palm of the other man. If the other man uh, shake it, I, they, you know, it's it's like, it's a whole download world, y'all. Seriously. It's a whole download world. And it's crazy. If y'all have it, it's a, it's a man who wrote a book also about being on the download. He's a black man. Uh, you all need to get that book as well. Um, I'm, I hate that I don't have that information right now. Um... His wife walked in on him and this man. You know, it's not for us women. It's just not. You find women out here that don't care. They just want some legs to lay up with and not have to say that they have a man. But then you got a whole nother set of grown women. Don't play with me and don't play with my life. So I just had to uh, back up this woman this morning. I hate she lost her life behind that. Uh, and everything, but honey, when you out a download man, 
you might as well be looking because I did. It just wasn't social media back then. But, honey, everybody that I could tell, they was like, what happened to y'all? Because he was fruity. And that's what I said back then because he was gay. Not him. Yes, he had, he had me and a man. You know. And this boy still wouldn't let me go. He still stalked me. I, like I said, I'm going to get into that. But I just wanted to come on here and just tell you women, be careful, ask questions. Even questions, I don't care how much you love this person, ask questions. And some of y'all, it's been some geeky men that really interested in you. But because he don't look a certain way, or what you quote unquote think he should be, you going for that stereotype man, you feel like, ah, yeah, and that's the one that's going to take your life. The little nerdy one just want to love you. The one nobody give that nerdy one no attention. You know, I'm just going to stop right there. But I did want to come on here and say I've been through that. I've been, I lived that. Like I told y'all, me and the boy moved in together. Was, was, honey, there was nothing that I could blink or think about that he did not give me. And I think he was overcompensating because he did not want me to find out. He didn't want me to find out at all that that's the lifestyle he was living. I don't know what he do now. Can't stand him. From my under well, I had one interaction with him last year, 2018, uh, because our daughter. Um, his thing, his thing was since I outed him and all this and stuff like that. Then he signed over his rights to our daughter. So when our daughter put a picture up of me and him and said, which one do I look like, my mom or my dad, he commented and said, I ain't your dad. You know, blah, blah, blah. And everybody, everybody where we live in Noah said, girl's daddy. Even his, even his parents was like, she's a splitting image. We even had to go take a DNA test because, one, I, I took a test test to make sure I didn't have nothing. And I had to take it for a whole year to make sure because he wanted to play Russian roulette with my life. And I was stupid. But you know what? That woke me up. Now, that that woke me up in another area. That's why I said, y'all want to know my story. Yeah, if I hadn't lived it, I wouldn't have believed it. I promise you. But I promise God, if whatever he bring me out of, I would tell it if it means helping somebody else. So... I just wanted to come on and say that, but y'all be careful. Ask the hard questions. And women, there is nothing wrong with being single. If you really desire to be a wife, you a wife before he finds you. The Bible says he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Not he that findeth a girlfriend, he that findeth a woman. It specifically says he that findeth a wife, meaning before he finds you, you're doing everything that a wife does. You have your own money. You can clean a house. You know how to cook. You can budget. You know what I'm saying? I'm it just you are the help me to that person. So when he finds you, he a man knows within let me tell you something, a man knows when he meets you whether or not he's gonna marry you. And that's the truth. He know he puts you in one of three categories. You're a friend, a friend with benefits, um, our wife. When he meets you, it depends on what you put out there. Don't be asking for a millionaire man when you when you in the gutter. You can't even balance a checkbook. You ain't even faithful working at McDonald's. You don't even clean your house nor your body. But you want a man with all this money and our wife. When he gets you, he'll be broke. Cause you don't know how to you don't know how to stand. So anyway, I just wanted to say that y'all, y'all take it easy out there and y'all be blessed. This was Coco929. Thank you for subscribing to me. Thank you for being uh, one of my Coco Hershey's kisses. So just know that I love you. I don't have to know you to love you. You are so and you belong to God. So love you. Tell people about my channel, Smooches.